All right, that looks like the end of the line. Uh, people will be straggling in here. So, uh, everybody, welcome to Brony Stand Up Comedy. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be uh, fun, but we want to treat this like a real show. We have uh, me and two other performers that are gonna be coming up here tonight. So you know we gotta be respectful. So if I could ask that you all please keep your cell phones on vibrate at least, that would be really awesome. Uh, kind of throws someone off whenever they hear a buzz sometimes. Um, we gotta be respectful and try to keep um, chatter to a minimum throughout the panel, that would also be wonderful. Laughter's accepted, laughter is always accepted. Um, and shouting out of punchlines and other things is really not cool. Um, I just asked that now, so appreciate if none of that would happen. I'm happy that you all uh, found your way to this panel. This is, uh, my name's Bradley Smith. I also go by Headliner, which is a really narcissistic name <laughs> for a comedian. <laughs> I didn't think other people would be doing comedy when I came up with that name. Uh, so yeah, but um, I do, I do stand-up comedy on the normal in, the Houston, in Houston, Texas, which is where I'm from. Uh, I also have performed brony stand-up comedy at plenty of other conventions, including, yeah. Were you at brony fanfare? Yeah, I was at brony fanfare. I was the one who annoyed the crap out of you with the this guy routine. Well, thank you. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, I performed at Brony Fanfare, I've also performed at Fiesta Equestria, Nightmare Nights Dallas, uh, BabsCon, I've also been confirmed again for Brony Fanfare, DerpyCon South. I've performed places. Uh, I've also put out an hour-long Brony stand-up comedy album that never got put on any media sites, so none of you heard about it, but I did. Uh, I threw my money at what I love and no one loved it back. Uh, but. We do have other comedians up here uh, that will be coming up that are um, less experienced, but we want to give them we want to give them love. So please, you know, be respectful and uh, all that jazz, you know, all that mushy stuff, being nice and friendly and whatever else the show is about. Uh, but moving on with the comedy, we're gonna see if we can get some more people in here. Let's all do a first exercise laugh. If we could all just let out a big. There we go. Uh, all right, okay, that guy's freaking me out. <laughs> this guy's just doing a psycho laugh. So we can die down to laughter. Someone just left. <laughs> That's not a good sign. Oh, we got someone in here. Congratulations, you all have brought someone. Come on in, come in. Yes, you've been dragged in. This is stand-up comedy. Uh, sadly, we're going to keep questions till later. The performers who are going to be performing. What is the very short? I probably won't. Now I'm going to feel stupid. Thank you. What's your album called? How many Pinkie Pies take a screw in a light bulb? See? Now I feel stupid. That's a math question. What, what, how many? However many don't say fun. <laughs> No, not here! <laughs> Having bronies say fun at a convention is like a baby crying at IHOP. It's everywhere! Don't you know, folks? It's twilight time this year. And with that, since we've gone over the rules and we've got two good laughs out of you, one that was genuine, uh, I'm gonna bring up uh, the first comedian to be doing a set tonight. Uh, he's best friends with Tara Strong. He won Comedy Central's award for Funniest Man Alive Forever. Uh, none of these have been made up, by the way. Uh, he wrote any joke that you ever thought was funny. Uh, please give it up for Diz. Thank you, thank you for those uh, up uplifting words, I guess I could say. Uplifting, that's, it's, uh, thank you. Anyway, like he said, um, I, no, he, he was lying. I w I'm new to this, and, but I, I'm pretty sure that you guys aren't new to being an audience, right? Like, you guys have been audiences before. All right, so you should, 
I, I'm going to have to ask you to do either one of two things. A, you're going to laugh at my jokes, even if you don't think they're funny. Usually there'll be a pause or something like this. <laughs> or B, just put on a poker face and act like nothing I say is funny. <laughs> just like that, good job. Um, so, I'm going to talk a little bit about myself, and by myself I mean the pony I think I am, because I am absolutely crazy. <laughs> Come on, how many, how, many, how many people here use the term any pony in like regular situations? See, a lot of you. I, I, I can raise my hand to that. I think I use them. I get it mixed up sometimes. Um, so, as a uh, small, multicolored uh, talking horse, as you can obviously say I am. Uh, I've, I've gone quite a ways to get here, to, to BronyCon. See, uh, back in 2013, like well, the last BronyCon I went to, they, uh, they, announced, uh, they announced that I was going to be on the moon. I don't know if any of you saw that. It was, uh, it was a post on April 1st. Um, so what I did is I went to Princess Celestia, and I said, I want to go to the moon. Uh, she didn't feel like getting the elements of harmony together. She just offered me a banana as compensation. Um, she did say that, and she did say she could send me to the, uh, the Griffin Kingdom, because uh, Griffins, they, they have a space program, Equestria doesn't. Um, so yeah, I, I get on a boat and I go all the way over to the Griffin Kingdom and, and they, I, I say I need to go to the moon. So what they do is they, uh, they, they, they put me in a cardboard box with a rocket strapped to it. Uh, they say, uh, goodbye my friend. And then they, uh, I, I, they gave me a banana too. Uh, <laughs> at this point I have two bananas. Just, uh, just keeping track. I have two bananas. I, so I'm in this cardboard box, I have two bananas with me, I eat them out of uh, either stress or fear. I hear the, the fuse on the rocket, like, sizzling up the, uh, you know, the fuse. It's, I get really scared, and then I hear an explosion, and now I'm here. So that, that's my, that's my, uh, that, that's, a, that's how far I've come. <laughs> anyway, um, you guys are doing a really good job at laughing, my jokes aren't funny. <laughs> Seriously, you guys have. You're a great audience. I haven't even been up here for five minutes. All right, so as you can obviously tell, I'm a musician. But none of you would have guessed that. But it, uh, legitimately, this is my first time doing comedy. Um, oh, this, is, this is unfortunate. Okay. Can I reach over here? No, I can't. Anyway, see, this is technology. Something that doesn't exist in Equestria. And on this technology, I have, um, well, I've, I've written letters to Princess Celestia before. Don't, don't look at me like that. Twilight got me into it. Uh, now that she's a princess, Celestia needs something better to do than read uh, less legible fan fiction of uh, whatever people write fan fiction these days. Whatever they, whatever it is that they write fan fiction about. So, um, I'm, I'm, write, I'm writing her letters. I'll show you, oh, I'll read to you a couple of the letters that I've uh, sent to her. Here's the first one. It took Spike a couple of times to get it across, but after three days, I come up with this. <laughs> hey, don't laugh at me. You try drawing with a mouth. You try drawing with your mouth. This is, this, is, this is art, okay? This is art. First letter, I'm sure she appreciated it. Anyway, the rest of my letters are on here. So, here's the first one. Uh, well, that was the first one, but the second one I wrote her evolved Pinkie Pie. Um, yeah, here it is. Anyway, after 22 minutes of waking up, leaving Sugarcube Corner, explaining this to Twilight, and then confronting Pinky about it, it's give or take 22 minutes, I wrote this. <clears throat> Dear Princess Celestia, today I learned something. 
But I also have a question for you. I learned that it's important to love your friends for who they are and tolerate the little things that you may not like about them. As for my question, is there any, swift, is there any specific way to tell if a drink, say, punch has been tampered with? Pinkie Pie says there isn't. <laughs> your drowsy friendship student is. Uh, here's another one. Dear Princess Celestia, Twilight and I had an interesting experience with Rainbow Dash today. It involved her griffin friend, Gilda. I learned that friendships are never truly broken. They're simply locked away in an iron cage <laughs> that's chained up to a moving boat out at sea, heading straight for the griffin kingdom in the middle of the night, raging and cursing no pony in particular's name. <laughs> Twilight and Rainbow Dash recovered their temporarily lost friendship. Your soaked friendship student, Diz. <laughs> oh, this one was past Nightmare Night. Dear Princess Celestia, this Nightmare Night was a learning experience for me. Like every week, something interesting happened somewhere in the land of Equestria. Emphasis on somewhere. This week was no different. I learned that even though your friend may dress up as a shadow bowl and steal all of your candy, she does it because it's all in good, harmless fun. And it's good to have fun sometimes. You know what else is fun? Throwing eggs at cloud houses. <laughs> Your breakfast covered friendship student Diz. <laughs> Dear Princess Celestia, today I learned something about accepting losses and not being a sore loser. I also learned a lot about culture. Whether you're a black horse with white stripes or a white horse with black stripes, any pony can rap. <laughs> Your genuinely surprised friendship student, Diz. <laughs> Dear Princess Celestia, today I learned that not everyone is going to tell me that the world is made of sunshine and rainbows. Trust me, he said. I'm a doctor, he said. It's going to be fun, he said. He had no idea what he was doing. Your gender-bent friendship student, Diz. Already oh, here's, a, here's, a, here's a recent one. Today, I learned something about love. Not only is it a warm feeling that makes almost everyone who feels it incredibly happy, not only is it a feeling that can be shared with both your friends and enemies alike, not only does it provide a peaceful solution to almost all of life's problems, but it can also be utilized as a massive, wide radius explosive weapon capable of decimating entire species. Best wedding ever! Your enamored friendship student, Diz. Oh, this one's from a while back, not really a while back, but a while back. Anyway, dear Princess Celestia, today I learned that looks can sometimes be deceiving. Conversely, looks may not be deceiving at all. They may be all revealing. On another note, Pinkie Pie's sister arrived in Ponyville today. She's rather intriguing. I probably would have made good friends with her if only I could bring myself to talk to her again. I, I had the idea of writing her a song. I didn't get a chance to ask what her favorite genre of music was. Do you think she'll like rock? Your friend zone friendship student, Diz. That's it. That, that, that's all the letters I've got on me. Um, but um, I do have a bit more to. Uh, I do have a bit more to talk about. It's um. It's this uh, friend I had back in Ponyville. I went to school with her. We used to hang out a lot, and e even like after school, you know, sometimes you might get together with your, your friends after school. Um, her name was uh, Heartstrings, Lyra Heartstrings, that was her name. Um, she had this interesting uh, philosophy about like the life, or the life, the universe, and everything, and being the, uh, the philosophical person I am, uh, I, I had a lot of talks with her, you know, like in-depth talks. The stuff she talked about, it kind of made sense, 
I mean, it explained a lot of things, like uh, why ponies have door handles uh, or shovel handles in, uh, and other things that are completely inoperable using hooves, like uh, typewriters and pianos, uh, just stuff like that. Um, so, but after a little while, it started to get like a like an obsession, maybe. Maybe that's a good word. Maybe it's a good word to use. Um, she wanted to figure out, uh, you know, what what exactly, uh, you know, happened to uh, the the reason that these things exist. There, uh, she spoke of like these uh, these creatures with uh, uh, what do you call them? Hands. You might be familiar with those. Uh, she talked about those a lot. Anyway, I, I talked to her when I, I said, Lyra, this isn't healthy. You're starting to obsess. You're starting to act like these creatures control your life. Think about this. Handle this appropriately. She just kind of looked at me and gave me like a creepy smile. I, it was, uh, was kind of weird. I think she started a cult. I don't know. I can't confirm this, though. But hey, she's happy. I guess it could be worse off, you know, she could be poorly animated and have a generic backstory. <laughs> or just be product placement. I'm looking at you, Gen 3. Um, another, uh, oh geez, this is uh, not very good for walking around. Another story from uh, Ponyville, there was this, uh, this, this, uh, this one guy, I, I didn't catch his name, it was like, uh, he was, uh, he was red and black. You, you, uh, any, any of you, any of you, any of you, any of you seen him anywhere? Any of you? He's red. He's red and black. He's a. He's an alicorn. If that. Uh, if that. If that gets anything. That was his name. Donut Steel. Donut Steel was his name. Um, yeah. Steer clear of him. His cutie mark keeps changing. Skulls, fireballs, swords, stuff like that. He's creepy. He follows me everywhere. I can't escape him. I only see like three of you are laughing, so. You know, this joke's over. <laughs> and uh, with that, I'm going to, uh, you know, I'm going to step out of character here. And going to give you a little bit about the Phantom C, uh, you know, you know, headliner. He's a he's a comedian. You know, I'm not a comedian. You know, uh, what's what's his name? He's famous. AC Racefest, Saber Spark. I mean, they make videos, right? Something like that. Yeah. So like, they're like immensely popular within the fandom, right? I mean, you, you guys have heard of them, right? Yeah. yeah, 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 good. I just need to make sure that I'm, I'm speaking to the right audience here. Uh, we're immensely popular. So, how, but looking out on the outside, how would you explain that to somebody who wasn't in the, fa in the fandom? Um, say, you know, somebody comes up, you see all these people around you, but they're not a brony. They're like, what is it that you do? You know, uh, I make videos about my little pony or I make songs about horses. Um, you know, I'm, I'm a voice actor. Oh, what you voice act in? It was a fandom thing. You probably wouldn't know what it is. But then, then you get like, with like real, uh, I don't want to use the word real fame, but you know what I'm saying, real fame. You get people, it's like, yeah, I'm uh, Christopher Walken and I'm an 11, actor, that's and you get like, uh, I'm like I, know. I don't know, you know, Clint Eastwood is like, oh, I'm an actor, yeah. and then you get like, you get Tara Strong, she's like, I'm a voice actor in everything, uh, and then you get, you know, it's just awkward, you get, so then, you, then you get people like Batman, who are like, I'm Batman, and I am a knight, yes, Luna is the knight too, but I'm more of the knight. Anyways, that's that's enough of my pointless Batman impressions. Um, I, I'm pretty sure that's about all I have right now, and that's, that's all the spaghetti I have to throw at you. If you want any more, 
you have to go to an Italian restaurant. So I'm going to ask uh, whoever's coming back up here next to come back up here and please make me look less awkward. This is the pride rib of comedy that's going on right here. The banter talking. Hello. Come on, give it up for Diz, guys. First time. Hear the love, man. Stand-up comedy can happen in this fandom. Oh, it's nice. Uh, so, writing letters to Celestia, you know, you said those were friendship letters, but by some of the things you told me, those do not sound like friends. So, the next guy we have coming up, he's also uh, less less experienced. Um, is this this your first? It's not his first. He says no, Wait, like so a bro. No, nah, it's not my first. Uh, Sounds uh, trustworthy. This guy, uh, he won the award for uh, he's he is uh, he's the funniest person. You all voted actually in your sleep in your subconscious. You voted him the funniest person ever. Uh, he also he gave all his jokes to any comedian that what? you like. He he wrote their material. No, I flew. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I know. Isn't that and uh, he's gonna be That's he's gonna be killing gonna be it up here. So please give it up for Liberty, dude. That whole scene is a unicorn. Yeah. Thank right, you, that Conan. Looks like the end of the line. Uh, uh, people uh, I, guys, you really need to give it up for so, Driz. Uh, I mean, everybody, welcome to a Brony Stand Up Comedy. First time I ever did it, I was 12 years old, and I did it in a church. Yeah, it's gonna be. It's gonna be a. Fun, Don't worry. The uh, uh, truth is like a real the show. most lewd yeah. joke was about uh, me, me and butt two surfing. Other performers that are gonna be uh, up here tonight. Now you may so, not know this, but Driz actually has a real so name that uh, only his best best friends call him. Vibrate at least. That would be really awesome. It's Driz. Uh, kind of Driz. Oh. Well, it doesn't matter. Uh, he still has the same name. His best be, best uh, friends call him Doctor Delicious. Throughout the panel, that would also be wonderful. Not for that Laughter reason. Is accepted. <laughs> Laughter is always accepted. Um, and what was that? Out of punchlines <laughs> and other yeah, it's like <laughs> really not cool. Yeah. Um, Amateurs. So, so I can certainly hear Brony Palooza down uh, below me. This is, they never do uh, shut up, do they? Bradley Smith. I also go oh by man! Headliner, I was there last year. <laughs> and uh, if I remember correctly, I Mike the microphone was actually there me, last year. With that name. First, uh, first time so, yeah. I ever saw him perform but, uh, live, you know. I do, I do stand up. And when I first saw him, I looked up in amazement, in, Houston, Houston, Texas, in glory, from, the beautiful, uh, beautiful I face, the shinily, shiny, yeah. sparkling Goldilocks that shimmered off the stage lights. Well, thank you. And I said to myself, that is the best eight-year-old uh, so rapper yeah, I've ever Brody seen. Fan, he keeps uh, it up. Um, he'll become the next Vanilla Ice. I'm Brody not kidding. Fanfare, he'll, he'll, he'll go far. I've also at least to the Chesapeake. But uh, the, uh, I like calling him Mike the Baby-Faced so Microphone. It, but I did. Because uh, I he looks uh, abnormally uh, young. I mean, look at me. I'm 18, but I look like I'm about to die at age 30. He looks... Here, uh, I look at him and I go, hmm, uh, he's the best preschool graduate ever. I mean, tsh, why is everyone in this fandom so young? I mean, the only the only person I don't mistake for young is like Dusty Cat, but that's because he kind of looks like my father. So I don't get the sense of, oh, he's adorable in the stroller, so much as clean your damn room. Do not make me get my guns. Uh, all right, okay, that guy's freaking me out. I know where your grandmother was buried. This guy's just being Because I was the one that put her there. We just died on the laughter. Someone just left. Which he's lying. She was cremated. That's not a good uh. sign. Oh, we got someone in here. Congratulations, you all brought someone. Come so on So anyway, in. Yes. these are You've a bunch of pretty in. microphones. 
So, I began thinking. There was one, uh, one uh, what's the word for it, uh, 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 panel that I wanted to go to but wasn't able to. It was the Thorough Analysis of MLP starring uh, Tommy Oliver. I think that's his real name. I think he sometimes goes by the name of Digibrony or Brony Curious. No, no, Digibrony is the other person. Well, that's right. Digibrony is his wife. I forgot. How uh, many? Uh, <laughs> oh, is he not no, a woman? Oh, not here! Oh, no, no, uh, okay. Well, anyway. So, I don't know. I always get weird feelings when I watch his videos, or especially when I see him in person, because he looks like he's constantly living in a shampoo commercial. I mean, he's got this long, flowing hair that shimmers like the microphone. They shop at the same store. Uh, and they are all... Um, they're always... Uh, uh, what's the word for it? Uh, he always talks fast. Have you noticed that? Uh, <laughs> is, he always he seems to go, Hi guys, I'm here to tell you all about uh, 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 Brony stuff. Like, uh, I noticed that this uh, 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 concept involving uh, Sweetie Belle and Scootaloo is no doubt a uh, 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 metaphor for uh, the great civil rights movement of 1965. Thank you. Thank you for this. Uh, Clearly, the uh, uh, less colorful Scootaloo has to make her way against the pasty white pony Sweetie Belle. Thank you. Anyway, this like is said, a very, very um, 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 deep I, uh, analysis I, uh, of such a deep fandom. I'm pretty sure that you guys are new so, in the audience. Plus, right? he wears a stupid like, hat. You guys have been audience before. <laughs> I mean, All right, so you should, did he just find uh, that on the street one day? Like, did he walk outside of Brony Con, hey, see some homeless guy and go, hey, jokes. let me have Even your hat. Even if you hat. don't think they're funny, usually there'll be you, a pause or something like this. He probably just said, you know, <laughs> I'm like, head pony. Or B. The homeless guy didn't know what he was saying. Act like but, nothing you know, I say is funny. Hey, he probably <laughs> bought it to him just for like a pancake or something. Looks like a pancake, frankly. So, so anyway, I'm gonna talk I wrote a little stuff bit down. And by Not myself, right here. I mean the pony I think uh, I am because I'm absolutely ooh. crazy. Ooh, that is nice. Yes, yeah, very nice. How many, how many people I was, uh, use the term any it's pony weird. in like you got Diz, situations? The He's inexperienced one, headliner, the pro, and me, the experienced I I novice. I get it mixed up sometimes. It's, um, no, it gets, at least it gets so, better. As a uh, small <laughs> and the uh, uh, talking so you know, force, as you can obviously you guys say, have heard about that equestrian uh, girl scene. I've gone come quite a ways to get Rain to, to what? What's it See, called? Uh, back in Rainbow Rocks. Ooh. Like, well, the last one cool. I went to. Uh, they, uh, they you know, the, maybe they I'm the only one, but I actually thought the first equestrian girls wasn't that, that bad. It was, a, it was a post you on know, first. you know. Um, yeah. So, I mean, what I did, I'm not gonna I say it's like the Princess Citizen Celestia, Kane of the said, Pony fandom, but, but you know, but it was entertaining. Like, 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 I mean, when I was going into it, I was like, no, <laughs> maybe I'll like it in the same way I like getting into a car accident instead of getting into uh, get, having like a stroke or something. But you know, I actually liked it. I I'd be willing to watch it again. I haven't watched it again because you know I actually had to do stuff with my life. Um, uh, so yeah, I, I, I love this guy in the front. The He's just like, and, and oh, all these jokes are hilarious, I, man. I say I need to go to the moon. I, so this, what they do is they, uh, I'm really, they, they, yeah. they put me in a you live with your parents too? With a rocket strapped to it. <laughs> uh, they say uh, goodbye, my friend, and then they, uh, <laughs> I, uh, they give okay. me a banana too. Uh, but you know, I had point, a bad had experience seeing the question girls because I actually went to go see it in the theaters. So I'm and I paid money too. To the rest of you, of, uh, rest of you people just snuck here. in. I bet. I hear the, the fuse and the uh, rocket, like, sizzling up I actually the, went uh, in. It was nice, you know. Really it was a decent sized theater. I hear an explosion. But the problem here. was, I was set. So that, that's my. I had to be my, sitting uh, right next. That, that's, a, that's how far. To I the one guy in the Brony fandom who can't shut up, who just could not keep his opinions to himself during this movie, because. I have to Seriously, use this chair. Uh, I haven't even been up here for five minutes. All right, so as uh, you can obviously tell, what is this? I'm a musician. No, 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 okay, no. None no. of you would have guessed that. That is uh, it, not what Celestia is supposed to look like. Um, uh, that is not how this I do her. That is not um, um, anyway. No, no. I just, 
I can't even finish my sentence. I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm disgusted by this. So offensive. Can I reach her? And he had this guy sitting next to him. Anyway, I presume he was his friend. This is technology. I doubt it, but <sighs> something that doesn't. Yeah, uh, but the thing was, the weirdest thing and was was that his friend, the entire I time sitting next to him, well, I've, never I've moved a muscle. I thought he was dead, yeah, frankly. Like uh, and the problem was, this guy kept, like, blabbing on, like, oh, you know, uh, you know, Sons of Shimmer's kind of an underwhelming villain. I wish uh, I was Trixie turned evil again and struck vengeance into the heart of all these teenage girls. The teenage girls will be horrified by an egomaniac. Yeah, because teenage girls aren't egomaniacs themselves. Well, high schoolers. I'm in college, I can make that joke all I want. <laughs> so anyway, he's blabbing on and on. This sucks. You know, I it didn't change my diapers for me or whatever. And uh, his friend just sits there. Like he never talks. And he never says anything. I didn't even see him move once. You know. So I, for a while, I thought, did he just die? Was he like from the last movie? And did he just die sitting there and? He's like, uh, oh, hey, the one guy who can stand my constant annoying one, bickering. How you doing, buddy? Um, uh, yeah, anyway, only the dead understand. Frankly, I think he just found him in the parking lot and just dragged him in. He just sort of, you know, he just sort of propped him up as he came to take a booth. And he's like, hey, uh, hey my, me and my buddy here uh, like to uh, see this movie. Uh, sir, he looks kind of dead. I uh, but I live in Florida. Everyone looks dead. Uh, 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 if you're not young, you're dead. That's the, that's the general rule. But, um, anyway, <laughs> this guy made me mad. I mean, he would, he would not be quiet. The final straw was like at that ending scene where Sunset Shimmer, like, undergoes the bastardized Power Rangers Yoda. transformation. I, learned that friendships I mean, what's what's the term for it? I mean, uh, ooh, pretty lights. Uh, so anyway, he's doing that, and out of nowhere, he yells. He yells. He doesn't, like, mutter it. He just sort of goes, hey, look, guys, it's Sunset Satan. God. Uh, of course, all the girls laughed. Dear Princess Celestia, Ugh. this nightmare. Then again, they were middle schoolers, so. Like everyone, I should have expected that. Somewhere in the land of Equestria. <sighs> I mean, there were. No for a while, I was thinking, is this I guy like a sociopath? Does he, does he like not care what anyone else around him thinks? She does it because it's. It was either that or he was a narcissist. Harmless. Now I'm gonna give you guys a lifelong tip for dealing with people who talk in the movie you know theaters. Fun? See, the problem is Throwing people who talk in the movie houses. theaters are one of two people. They're either narcissists or sociopaths. So what you gotta do, if you want to find out which one they are, while they're talking, I'm gonna have to demonstrate, if you yell at them to shut up, the narcissist will go, how dare you speak to me that way? I am the number one in the universe. I... I will head higher and higher than your pitiful peon self will ever manage to go. I am Superius Maximus or something. Of course, then I'll just shut up and, you know, my life is ruined by this one guy back-talking me. But now the psychopath, the psychopath when you hey, shut up. Today, I learned that not everyone is going to tell me that the world is made of sunshine and rainbows. Trust me, he said. I'm a doctor, he said. It's going to be fun, he said. <laughs> you need to run. Get no idea. What <laughs> you, you have to get out of there your before the movie ends. Otherwise, yes. they're going to find your body in the parking lot. So, life lesson. You've learned something Today, at BronyCon. I learned something about love. On the up, Not I guess. A warm uh, makes you know, I, feels as I sit here happy. looking, I'm Not reminded of coming to BronyCon last year. You know what we called it last year? 
Not only does it provide a peaceful Don't jump solution con. to almost all of life's problems. Last year we we had Brony Palooza upstairs. Explosive weapon capable of decimating yes, entire species. And the thing was, was Best that they said, ever. "Oh, you can't jump," because you know we built this uh, amazing like theater for thousands of people, but you know a couple student. hundred jumping. Yes. Yeah, that's just not working. You know, this one's from I guess Florida. Baltimore has lesser standards yeah, than really Florida. Anyway, dear Princess Celestia, Ooh, yeah. burn. Today, I learned that looks can sometimes. Were you doing the seminal chant? Conversely, looks may not Maybe. be deceiving at all. They may be all revealing. No. Mm. On another note, so the bottom line is we call it Tony "Don't Dope Jump Day. Con." This year, we're going to call it "The Sound Doesn't I Work would have made Con." Good friends with her, if only I could bring myself to talk to her again. <laughs> yeah. I like that I guy. The idea of writing her a song. You know, I didn't get a like every other panel I go to, the sound just does not work. Do you work. think she'll like They're rock? Like, well, it was the connections. Sure. They the want more money, be honest. <laughs> and not a single ball pit to be found. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's, but, uh, we, I, I do have you want me to pay extra for the ball pit? I'll pay you extra for the ball pit. But you got to have a ball pit in order for me to pay extra for the ball pit. I mean, it's, this, uh, it's logic, guys. Back Use your noggin. I went to school with her. We used to Let's hang see. out a lot. Oh, e even, like, I thought I saw someone. School. You know, sometimes you might get together with your, your friends after school. Oh, that's right. You're um, there. Uh, her name was, uh, <laughs> heart strings. <laughs> anyway. That was Let's see. Um, she had do, this do, do. interesting Oh, uh, that reminds me. About, like, the life I was... Life, being here universe, brings me back a lot of memories. You know, I'm thinking back to when I first became a brony. Back uh, in the I, I had a lot of talks fall of 2011, the stuff she it was right before my 16th birthday. It kind and of I made was sense. I mean, stuck it in high school. Things, like, uh, why my parents had big, big expectations handles. for me. They expected um, me to make millions of dollars handles. by age 17. Yeah. Uh, and other things that they expected me to have the greatest PhDs in the world by like age 19. And they expected me to be ruler like of the that. universe by age 25. Um, so, but then the while, ponies came, it to get and I like a, never left like the an internet. Obsession, maybe? Maybe that's a good word. Maybe it's a good word. But you know, um, honestly, my parents took uh, to my out, becoming uh, a brony you know, fairly what, well. I mean, what exactly, uh, when my mother first heard it, she went, oh, you're getting artistically interested in stuff. Finally, like you're not wandering speech, aimlessly uh, through the annals of your life, just briefly uh, glancing at things. Anyway, you are I, now I focused on an artistic I, identity. I said, Myra, this isn't healthy. You're uh, starting to obsess. You're starting okay. to act like Yeah, that was my reaction, too. Control your life. My father's reaction was even better. He forgot Handle about it in two weeks. I brought it up to me and goes, oh, the, wait, what was that? Oh, that that happened. I, she a oh. Cult. Oh. I don't know. I can't. I guess it would be that so. big of a deal hey, if I cared. She's happy. I guess it he, could be worse. He's a nice guy, though. So if you see him, what you want? Backstory. Give him or love. All right. Uh, headliner's flashing me. So <laughs> yeah. um, he really wants to come another, up. Uh, <laughs> anyway. So I gotta get going. He's gotta Another get story. up here. Uh, we need to have we fun times. Uh, so headliner, stop stalling this, and get up this, here. Uh, this one guy. I didn't, I didn't catch his name. He was uh, he was red and black. Uh, Give it up for Liberty, hey, dude, guys. Have you, have you seen him anywhere? I would just like to say before I get started with my own set, uh, let's hear it for the BronyCon staff. They are working very hard. Any problems they may have, every convention has them. They're working very hard for what they do. Uh, so yeah, now I'm awkwardly getting into my set. Um, so who here is from a show of hands is, uh, saw me around the convention and performed at the Renegade stage and I've been walking around with Mike, who's okay? So quite a few of you have seen me. Don't worry, I'm doing a set I haven't done here yet. Uh, so exciting! Uh, it is actually the first set I ever did. This joke's uh, over. Brony comedy, and uh, it's a fun story. It's about and, uh, online role playing. With that, 
I'm going to, uh, you know. By a round of applause, who are your online role players? Yeah. Anybody ever done it? Give you a little bit about the fantasy. Ever done it? Okay. Yo, you guys are in yo, for a treat then if you don't know about online role playing. Uh, so. It was, uh, I started with what's, online role-playing because I, got, I went to one of those brony sites and it was early on when I joined the fandom and I wanted to try to get into it more. Um, I wasn't too educated with the show or I didn't know how uh, nitpicky you need to be in order to like answer different questions and all that. So I was, I was still new to it. Essentially, yeah, 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 uh, went on one of these sure uh, chat rooms right and I just joined uh, in. They asked me what my name was popular. to enter the chat room, so, and I went—I was going how, by Pickle at this time because uh, I could take it on websites. So I just went, so I just put in Pickle, in and that was my name. And I enter in this room. Uh, There's two okay. other people in the chat room. They, you know, one guy whose name I can't recall, but it was a—it was two words: either Lightning Dash Flare Blitz or a mixture of those horrible horrible generic Songs names uh, and then this other guy in there um, named Lil Discord you know, I'm, I'm a voice actor oh, voice I, I, did, I didn't know if that was a canon character or not I was I was confused uh, and I enter in this room then, then you get like, just, all right chat room what am I gonna do I'm gonna chat uh, so I, I say like hello fame, but I then you know am saying, told what you are you doing in my house yeah I'm uh, Christopher Walken. this was the light <laughs> guy I was confused I was like I thought I was on my computer what's going on <laughs> Now I'm in this guy's house, and I was just staring at my screen for a moment before I could say anything. Uh, little Discord chimes in, and he goes, uh, Daddy, who's that strange pony? And I was blown away with the daddy thing. I was like, what? <laughs> okay, now, so I was just left, baffled at my screen, staring, wondering what was going on. And before, again, I could say anything. I'm just I'm staring. And it's now been minutes. <laughs> I've just been staring, <laughs> trying to comprehend. And I'm, I'm finally getting it. I'm like, oh, it's a chat room. They've created this environment. This is the son, it's the father. This must be their, oh, okay, this makes sense. Uh, so I'm like, all right, I can get into it. Before I can say anything, Lightning Dash goes, all right, I'm calling the police. <laughs> And then uh, he puts in asterisks, because if you didn't know this, if you ever want to do an action in role play, sometimes you'll use asterisks. You put an asterisk on both sides, that's the action. So he puts asterisk, walks over to the telephone, and picks it up, asterisk. So I'm like, okay, he's serious. He's calling the cops. <laughs> I can't have that happen. I just started being in chat rooms, you know? I'm not going to get arrested. That must be really boring. So I was like, all right, asterisks walks over to telephone and puts it down. <laughs> and then I say, no, don't call the police. If this was real life, imagine how bad this is. Some guy walks into your home, just stands there. Just, hey man, who are you? <sighs> All right, I guess I'm calling the police. No, do not call the police. <laughs> I give myself a Terminator voice in role play. It makes me intimidating. And uh, yeah, he's like, whoa, don't tell me what to do. And then the kid starts crying. A little Discord and asterisk says, starts crying. And then to tell you that he's crying, he tapes out, when all caps. And I was like, God, okay. You know, as I mentioned before, even in role play, there's babies crying. Mm, and I hate it when babies cry. So I was like, I gotta solve this problem. Asterisks puts muzzle on little discord. Asterisk. Yeah, I solved the problem. I can't do that in real life, but in here I can. To which little discord then goes. Muff, 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 muff. He's typing out MF, 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 MF. And I was like, man, this guy's really good. He's muffling his own cries. And uh, the dad then just goes, get that muzzle off my son, begins to take off muzzle. That's where he made the mistake now. He said, begins. He has not removed it yet. It's fair game. I, asterisk, put lock on muzzle, asterisk. Yeah, take that, kid. I don't even know if you can do that in real life, but I just did. Score one.
And uh, yeah, he's like fiddling with lock. Remove the lock off my son's muzzle. I'm like, this is great. And uh, I'm just like, I'll take the muzzle off if you can answer my riddle. He's just, he's at this point, I imagine just annoyed with me because they were probably doing something before this. He just goes, asterisk. Sigh, asterisk. <laughs> dot, dot, dot. What's the riddle? I'm like, all right. I don't have a riddle, okay. <laughs> gotta come up with a riddle now. Okay, um, ah, I've got one. I say, uh, what is my middle name? <laughs> he goes, that's not a riddle. I said, shut up or else the lock's never coming off. Now what's my middle name? You can do that when you're essentially God in this universe. It's fun. Uh, and then he just, he says, like, I, I, I don't know, um, Pumpkin? What? I don't know, you stupid. My name's Pickle. I don't have a middle name. Ponies don't have middle names. And then that's where I messed up. I, yeah, he's like, ah, you messed up, man. Uh, he's like, what are, you, what are you talking about? What about Pinkamina, Diane, Pie? And I was like, well... Uh, <laughs> he got me there. I didn't want to admit it though, because I was a cruel, defiant god. So instead of accepting defeat that I had forgotten Pink Pinky's full name, I, asterisk, kick son in lava, asterisk. <laughs> you guys think I'm the villain? Who's the one who bought a house with a lava pit in it? Let's be serious here. That was all on the dad. He needs to. He needs to go on house hunters. Work on that. Especially if I can kick his son into it. That's not. It's not a soccer ball. I can't. You know. I just kicked him. Uh, I've got a great soccer form. Uh, so uh, the, the dad obviously upset. I've just murdered his son. By the way, after I kick him in, it takes two seconds. He logs out. Little Discord's gone. I was like, oh my god. This is like, this is like Sword Art Online. He's gone now. I've destroyed him. Oh no, I felt legitimately bad. I was like, oh, that's rough. So it's just him and I now. He just says, uh, no! Exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point. Falls on knees looking over lava. <laughs> And I was like, wow, okay, I think I've gotten all I can out of this. I've killed the crying baby. My life is pretty complete. I skedaddle out of it. I leave, but only for a bit, because it's the internet, and if it's not entertaining you, it's boring you. It bored me. I decided to go back. I'm like, all right, gonna mess with a new group of ponies, right? Oh, he's still there. He's the only one still there. He's still role-playing. He's, he's role-playing with himself. And I just like can read text that he's left and it's just like, I've created a burial ground for my son in his honor and memory. I approach the tombstone carrying a dozen of red roses, the color of his mother's eyes. He's like, man, he really got into this. I set them down on his grave. A single tear cascades off my cheek and falls to the soil. I look down and I say, why? I was like, well, this, this is a lifetime original now. But I poofed in. I'm now in there. That's, that's a little awkward, where it's like you thought you were going somewhere else, and now it's like, and where I killed some kid. Ooh. And so I'm there. He, he immediately acknowledges me, goes, turns head towards Pickle. What are you doing here? I didn't know what I was doing there. <laughs> so I just said, well, you're a bad father. And he's like, that one, what? And I said, well, you were so eager to call the police on me when I just entered your home. I murder your son, he does nothing. <laughs> there was an insurance claim involved, is my opinion. <laughs> and that is the first time I ever online role played. It is fun, I would recommend it to you guys. And uh, we have about five minutes left here. I'd like to invite the other comics or comedians <laughs> up back on stage. Uh, we're going to be doing... 
I guess, I guess a small Q&A real quick with the last bit of our time. Uh, you, I want you guys to ask us, do any of these mics work? Can we get them on? Yeah, we got to turn them on. Oh, there we go, that one works. No, just there for show, they're fake. Uh, oh, turn it on, there's a switch. You good, can you bring it? All right, we're gonna sit, sit. It's sitting time. So we've all performed for you guys, and stand-up comedy is not something that's big in this fandom. It's something very passionate to me, and I would like to make it larger in this fandom. Is this one working? Yes. Okay. Can you pull over a chair? Sure. Yay. Oh, stand-up comedy. When we're not standing up, we're fiddling with chairs. <laughs> this is now sit-down comedy, yes. sir. Man, I've never heard that joke made before. That's good. Uh, so Original joke. Uh, if you guys ask us a, a silly enough question, or if you ask us a question that gets a good laugh out of you guys, uh, I'll give you guys a free physical copy of my Brony stand-up album, Laugh With Me. Uh, none of you have probably heard about it, but it's kind of good. That roleplay joke is on there, and so are other bits that I have. There's 50 other minutes of comedy on there. So comedies, or jokes, or questions, I'm trying to say words. Lou, you white shirt guy. You can get a selfie with us after this. There was two white shirt guys. Uh, you know what, after you take that selfie, I'm gonna give you a copy. But now we're going with actual white shirt guy. Or other white shirt guy. You are actual white shirt guy. We're going white jacket guy. White jacket guy. There you go. Will you continue to do role play as Ooh. <laughs> I don't know. Ah. If you want me to randomly just go into chats and just troll around as Pickle, I definitely will do that. Make a blog? Make a blog? <laughs> as Pickle. Is, that's actually a very good idea. You should do that. I, I, will, I will try that. Come up here. Can you grab a CD. YouTube channel. You yeah. Oh, I actually do have a YouTube channel. I put up a lot of my tracks from my album, and I put up a new series called Pinking and Dronies, where I get my friends drunk and then ask them episodes to reenact or tell episodes of My Little Pony. It's kind of like Drunk History with My Little Pony episodes. <laughs> Pick someone. Um, oh, I go by headliner on YouTube. I'm sorry that I keep interrupting. How could you? It's unforgivable. <laughs> it no, I'm just kidding. I forgive you. You're okay. Uh, you, with the, uh, the, the light shirt, I guess. White. Another white Wait, shirt. Is it the, it's the guy behind you. Oh, no, yeah, but yeah, it's it's go, it's go, it's go, it's go. Right there. You, 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 no, both of you can go. White shirt first. Have you ever considered oh, making yeah. a video of your like a like an actual reenactment of the whole event of you? Oh, well, like the the letters, like no, not the letters, but the kicking your son in the. Letters. Oh, yeah. oh me. Yeah. Damn. Okay. <laughs> okay. You I should actually confused. you should actually make you should make little video clips of your letters though. I think that would be funny. They're short enough to where you can make a series of them. That would actually be really yeah. good. And then as of tonight. me, I'm not the best animator, and I don't know animators because no talented people live in Texas. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. So many talented people do. Uh, but no, it, it would be fun. Uh, I guess if anyone ever came to me with interest in doing it, I totally would. You can you can come grab the CD if you want. Yeah, if you want to come grab it. And then it, we need to go with we need to go with Blackshirt guy because okay. you would, um, yeah. For you, since you were Thank were you. you there in Ponyville with the Pinky outbreak? Oh, Ooh. that we don't talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, we don't talk about that. <laughs> do not talk about it? We do not talk about what? <laughs> do not about talk about what? He's good at that. Talk about what? I'm not going to throw it. Turn down for what? Turn down for what? Yeah. Pick someone, man. They were the one that killed John F. Kennedy. <laughs> Pick someone, Liberty. What? You're picking someone. Oh, I'm picking someone. Uh, Feel free to ask a question. Are you still raising answers. your hand? No. All right. He's. Oh yes. Uh, all right. We'll go with the last King of Scotland there. <laughs> yeah, you're the last King of Scotland. I was asked this, I actually want it to be bread and butter pickles. Because those are pretty good. I'll give you something, I'll give you it later. You live near me, so. <laughs> uh, let's go with Pinky Guy over there. Do you like bananas? That's going to all of us. How do we feel about bananas? Uh, 
I'll have to. I have had bad experiences with bananas, <laughs> although at the same time they were sort of a comfort for me. Uh, um, bananas. They not only provide great potassium, but they work as great boomerangs. <laughs> they can be used to fend off the dingoes that run amok in your backyard. <laughs> I actually so, hate bananas because of the place I worked at. We had to make trace leches and they required cutting bananas. It was really stupid because we'd be trying to make drinks and we had to do desserts and this isn't funny, but I hate bananas. No. I love Tres Leches. It's amazing. If you guys, anyone here made me Tres Leches, I would garble, garble, is that a word? I would eat it up. Eat it up. Try to use vocabulary. That didn't want work. We're going to do two more questions, uh, and then we've got to end it. Um, we'll go with a green shirt girl. I have a question. You're a boy? You've got the dreads. I apologize. How could you? This is, I feel this bad. Is an unforgivable atrocity. Also, whoever asked the bananas thing. Uh, what? Yes, you yes, you're gonna get a CD. And I have a question for Dan. Yes. Do you regret leaving Ponyville? Ooh. What? Do you regret from leaving Ponyville or are you like kicked out of there or something? Oh jeez. Uh, <laughs> was he kicked out of Ponyville? Well I did. It was one time. It was uh uh it was with uh the time that Trixie came to Ponyville. She Let's just say that there are two different kinds of magic. Leave it at that. There's the first type of magic that all unicorns have, and that's uh, and the other type of magic is the magic that she was trying to do that was totally, totally stolen from me. <laughs> Fair enough. But I'm pissed. So wait, was it kept out? Well. Yes. <laughs> that pause means yes. 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 Uh, and now we're gonna do. Uh, one last one because we do have to wrap it up. Uh, you guys are all, oh, it's right there. You guys are all great. I am going to go with shaking brony hat guy in the back. Uh, yeah. I just wanted to ask if we'll be here next year. If we'll, if we'll be here next year, I definitely would love to come. I'm, I will be I'm here. Gonna try. Gonna next try. Year. I'll be but better not. next year. You're not? I'm, I'm not, I, I may not be may here. Not. Oh, I may be here. This guy, he's a smart aleck. See, <laughs> see, that's comedy because I took what you said and I made it into something else. <laughs> uh, that is, oh, you, you, you can grab one of these. But yeah, speaking of next year, that's uh, we hope to be here next year. We want to thank BronyCon for allowing us to do this panel. We want to thank all of you guys for coming. And give it up for Liberty Dude, Diz, and myself. Thank you all. If any of you guys would like to talk about purchasing Laugh With Me, a comedy album, you can come talk to me after the show because I'm boring and I'm not going to be doing anything. I love you guys. Please have a great night and have a safe night. Huh? That was funny. Yeah, it was.